rights activists are concerned about the results of Hungary's parliamentary election. Most of the votes have been counted and right-wing Prime Minister Viktor Orban is set to secure his third consecutive term in office. He's tried to create what he calls an illiberal democracy. Critics say that he undermined the free media, also the judicial independence there. The Prime Minister also campaigned heavily against immigrants and the UN Human Rights Chief has labeled some of his rhetoric as racist. He addressed supporters after claiming victory on Sunday. First, I would like to congratulate the voters. Thank you for your participation. My turnout has cast aside all doubt. There was a big battle behind us. We have won a crucial victory, got a chance, gave ourselves a chance to defend Hungary. Let's put this into focus now with Patrick Kingsley. Patrick, an international correspondent for the New York Times, and Patrick has reported extensively on Hungarian politics live in our London Bureau. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Good morning. First off, explain the dynamics in place that led voters to back Orban. How did he win? Well, I think there's four quick reasons. The, the first is um, a high level of scaremongering uh, in the election campaign, and indeed going back several years about the migration threat. In reality, very few migrants want to come to Hungary, but Viktor Orban successfully turned that into a, a major fear among voters that made him seem like the only person who could protect Hungary against an external threat. The second thing is the economy. The economy has got better under, under his watch. Uh, wages are up, as is employment. Uh, the third aspect is a very divided opposition that, that failed to rally around unity candidates in various different battleground constituencies that could have um, dealt a blow to him. And the fourth aspect is, is, as you say, this illiberal democracy that he's created over the last eight years in power. Um, if, if you want to know what a, what a far-right leader does when he comes in, into power, look at Hungary since 2010. He's eroded checks and balances, he's gained the electoral system, he's gerrymandered the electoral map, and he's created an environment in which it's very hard for opposition politicians to make any headway. Mm. Well, this election certainly has broader implications. In your view, what does it mean for the region? What does it mean for Europe at large? Well, I think you just have to look at the immediate reactions from politicians across Europe last night. The first people to react were far-right politicians, Marine Le Pen in France, Kurt Wilders in Holland, and uh, the AF AFD deputy leader in, in Germany. These are all far-right leaders in their own country and they saw Viktor Orban's victory as a, as a massive fillet for them. And so at a time when maybe externally it seems like Brexit is the biggest uh, challenge facing Europe, in fact, it's probably a country like Hungary, which unlike Britain, wants to remain inside the European Union and subvert its values from within. So all this coming on the heels of what we saw in Italy as well. That's where far-right parties also made gains, essentially campaign against campaigning against immigration, uh, criticizing the EU, all these things certainly threatening to the EU. Uh, what more can the EU do to counter what's happening? Well, one of the criticisms, uh, criticisms of the EU going back to 2010 with Hungary is that it didn't take enough action when it could, and that now, actually, uh, the, the die is being cast and there's not much more to be done. That said, there's a lot of debate about whether the millions and millions of euros that are sent to Hungary uh, in subsidies from Brussels, uh, where the EU is, is headquartered, whether, whether those funds could be cut um, if, if the democratic backslide in Hungary continues. Patrick Kingsley, thank you so much for your time and perspective live in London today. Thank you. And this just into CNN, Russia.